Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to talk about creating games inside of Blender. Specifically, a game engine inside of Blender. See, Blender has had a game engine in the past. They removed it at Blender uh, 2.8. And as you can see, Blender is currently at version 5. Now, if you've never heard of Blender before, well, hit like and subscribe on this video and then go on over to Blender.org and check it out. But I'm guessing if you are here, you have heard of Blender at this point in time. It is the singing, dancing application for 3D open source development. So it's got modeling, sculpting, animation, rigging, and so on. All kinds of tools are built in there and it is growing at a rapid pace. But like I said, you Years ago, they removed their game engine functionality. But the cool thing here is there is a project out there that has kept that dream alive. And that project is called UPBGE. Now, UPBGE is a super impressive project, uh, you fully integrated inside of Blender. So the idea here, basically think of it, is if you wanted to author and create your games, including your game logic, entirely inside of Blender, you can do that. You can even use geometry node stuff that's been built in. On top of that, they have their own um, construct-like uh, spreadsheet flow graph style of approach to it. And the reason why we're talking about today is because they just released a version 0.50. Now, this release is actually a pretty big deal. For one, it actually brings it up so that it is using uh, Blender 5 underneath. So it is per perfectly concurrent with the current version of Blender. We'll get back to this release notes in just a second. First, I want to go a little hands-on with UPBGE so you get an idea what you're dealing with. If you take a look at this, you're going to think, wow, that looks a lot like Blender. It's because it is Blender. It is a fork of Blender with game engine functionality added on top. So your next question might be, well, oh, okay, why? Why would you want this functionality? Well, let me give you an example. Let's say you are developing a racing game. What you would do normally in another game engine is you would develop your track somewhere, uh, your world environment like this, uh, and set up your racing condition uh, in like, say, well, Blender or 3D Studios Max or Maya. You would create your track here, your pieces of your track, and then you would organize them in your game engine. And you'd probably do your game engine logic inside of your uh, your engine. So you would have this back and forth. You would design like a building, for example, or a tree. You would create the tree in your DCC tool of choice, and then you would import it in. Well, in this particular case, you can do it all in one spot. So let's come here. I'm gonna stop moving that guy around. And here you can see uh, under the render category, cause this is UPBGE and not just base blender. Under the render category, I could turn the render engine to EV and I can say, okay, start. And then what you see here, this is the game object that I can now drive around my game world like so. And it's got physics functionality. So if I run into something, boom, there is our, uh, our response there. So you can create the entire game can be created here. But at the same time, if I grab something that I want to move or I want to change, I want to change this tree, for example, I can move those trees that are all instanced together, but I could go ahead and change out just the individual piece I need to change. I want to make something bigger or smaller. I could do so there. Uh, probably a better example is let's go with our car. I could go ahead and I could just modify the car because the car is quite literally a 3D object uh, in my game world. I could literally just come in here and start doing uh, normal editing to it. So here I could just grab uh, a piece of it, extrude it out or whatever. So basically all of my tooling is in the one spot where I need it uh, and I can work on things together. Now at the same time, you might be wondering, okay, how does my game logic work? Well, that can be done in a couple different ways. One way that's very common is via Python, not the console, the text editor. All right, here, so you can see, for example, this is the code for doing the audio of the engine. So this is basically gonna just say, uh, play the audio of the car as you're running around, activate it or deactivate it based off the center. This can then be called from bricks. Another piece of logic here, um, so car component. This is controlling the car itself. So you can use straight up Python for handling these kind of things here. But another option you've got is you come over here and you've also got logic bricks. And this is a bit of a different approach to things. Basically sensors, so things in the world. So you got the car here, uh, activate and on keyboard handling. So this is gonna be triggered when things start. This is gonna be triggered when a keyboard is pressed. And then you've got over here, this is gonna call uh, Python code. Uh, here that the car sound engine that code we looked at earlier on that was created in Python You could call it this way and handle it out accordingly and then you run things accordingly over here You've got actuators this things like do something like in this case play a sound So that is kind of how things are set up. You can set up game properties as you can see over here These are your various different variables control things in the world and These all work together so you can use a combination of this visual brick system 
and Python, uh, and again, uh, the node system of uh, the, you know, Blender, when did nodes get added? Blender 4-ish and beyond. You can all work together to create your games, but your games can be created entirely in Blender. No need to go anywhere else. Now, funny enough, uh, Unreal Engine are actually taking this approach, uh, but they're taking a, a different approach in that they're adding more and more 3D modeling and content creation and procedural tools to um, Unreal Engine. The results are ultimately going to be the same. You can do all of your development in one tool. No need to switch between DCC tools for creating your game content and your game editor for actually putting things together and then some kind of coding environment. It is all one place. That is what UPBGE offers as well. All right, so version 0.50 or 0.50, what do we expect here? It's actually .50 because it went .4.x, so I guess it's .5. Oh, uh, so what do we got here? Well, our new features include GPU skinning, although there are a lot of limitations on that right now. It is limited to one armature and one child mesh at this point in time. You can see it is part of the armature over here. So it's an experimental feature, should get some nice performance gains as a result. We've also had the addition of this Dupla base. Now, probably the biggest upgrade here also though, is the move to Blender 5 underneath. So it's a, a Blender bump. So you got the most current version as well. Now with the move to Blender, we've also got on the back end, they moved to Vulkan as an option. So you got OpenGL and Vulkan. Well, they've had to do some changes to deal with the Vulkan back ends, uh, including to change their uh, 2D filter system so that it works with both OpenGL and Vulkan back ends. Uh, the code was adapted uh, to follow the new way that things work for shaders there. So a bunch of changes to 2D filters. Here you can see a simple 2D filter uh, using the new syntax right there. So um, this just tilts uh, something blue. Uh, basically, so if you want to tint something blue, for example, this shows you how such a filter can be created. They also had to disable the video textures back in 0.44 because it was OpenGL only and not compatible with OpenGL and Vulkan. So this has been updated as well. Um, and then on top of that, we've got some improvements to physics. The soft body physics core uh, was reworked a bit to fix some issues there. Uh, RAS mesh object is using tries um, and so on. Uh, steering path following actuator was added. Uh, so added path direction smoothing with LERP blending uh, for act steering. These are, again, when you saw that um, visual programming system in action, these are kind of logic bricks that you can use as part of it. Uh, so new functionality there uh, with LERP blending for steering action is implemented with smooth transitions between path steering using slurp interpola interpolation with configurable blend times for steering actuators. Uh, so 0 0.15 seconds by default, zero seconds is the old behavior. Uh, sound actuator uh, was added, sound buffer option to the logic sound actuator, uh, and then a number of logic node changes as well, and a number of other fixes there as well. This, by the way, is an open source project available up on GitHub. Uh, so you'll see over here, uh, license-wise, it uses the GPL, which is probably one of the biggest downsides. Uh, that's kind of Blender itself is GPL. And there is a way of building your game so it doesn't couple it like what the Blender game engine did in the past. But this is, I think, why Blender game engine failed was ultimately this license. But uh, it's GPL makes a lot of sense when you're talking about software. But when you're talking about creation tools, that's where it starts getting tricky. Just ask Troll Tech or QT about that one uh, historically. By the way, if you're interested, uh, the game project that I demonstrated here, you can go ahead and download it. I will have this in the linked article down below. So if you want to check it out and use someone else's example, this is available. Uh, so this is a car demo showing uh, UPBG, the couple earlier versions, but it still works in this version just fine. If you want to go ahead and check that one out, that is the sample project I used for this video. And in terms of the thumbnail, this is a game that was created using UPBGE that exists and is up on Steam. So yes, ship titles have been created using this, including uh, the future ends. That is what the thumbnail for this particular video came from. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is UPBGE. If you want to go ahead and check it out, it is available at upbge.org. So the dream of the Blunder Game Engine lives on in the form of UPBGE. Did you use Blunder Game Engine in the past? Do you like the idea of having all of your tools in one place? Let me know in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.